It is a dark age. A bloody age. An age of war. The gods are cruel, and we are their playthings. But this is no game. It is ceaseless war, with the old world its prize. Many seek the path to victory, but only one can stand glorious over all. From the Badlands come the Orcs and Goblins, a green tide of brutal creatures that must be stopped. In Sylvania, the dead rise again. The Vampire Counts march forth. Dwarf kingdoms, long thought diminished, are resurgent under their High King. And at the Old World's heart stands the Empire. Karl Franz must prove worthy of the Warhammer. Corrupting, changing taint, despoils all before it. Only the strongest will endure. War is upon us. It is unending. What is good everyone, this is Asad from TheCoalition.com and this is Total War Warhammer. It is the latest entry in the Total War series and for the first time ever, the game has left its historical roots and is joined with a tabletop fantasy game Warhammer to deliver the ultimate strategy game set in the Warhammer universe. So those who have played Total War and before uh, will know what to expect. You pick your, um, you pick your faction, you go on the campaign map and you build an empire. And this game is a little different because since it's combined with the Warhammer universe, it's introduced a lot of fantasy elements as well, like magic and uh, quests as well. So in this video, we're just going to be looking at the campaign map, how to interact with the, in the uh, interface, Diplomacy, tra keeping track of finances, heroes progress, we might even see some combat as well. So without further ado, let's go into it and have some fun. Okay then, so here we are on the campaign map. I'm playing as the Empire, led by His Majesty Emperor Karl Franz. I command here. With his legion of a hero and many 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 soldiers this is Marienburg's main capital so I'm marching everybody on this capital here to destroy it because there are enemies speaking of what territory we've controlled we're gonna go to the strategic overview map which you can access by clicking the right icon up here the top right icon or you can push the tab key and the Empire's faction is in red so this is all under my control, this province right here. Got Middleland owning the north province of Middleland. Karak Ziflin owns the northern Grey Mountains. The southern Grey Mountains are owned by Karak Norn and so on and so forth. And if you zoom out right here, you can see how much of the old world you need to conquer. Soon my armies will march all over the old world because Sigma wills it. There are other factions out there too, but they're not highlighted in any color, so you don't know where they are just yet. 
on this screen here you can hide and show certain overlays that show the factions wealth diplomatic status and it's all color coded for example whoever allies with you on this overlay it's highlighted in blue enemy factions are red gray factions are neutral you can see how much public order you can have uh, public orders in each province a green is very good so my province is stable I don't know about the others but uh, when I get over there with my armies I'll probably find out that way hide and show heroes and military forces so let's filter the settlements and the heroes and sh the settlements and armies and show just the heroes my two heroes are out here we'll talk about heroes in later on but for now we're just gonna see what advantages that the uh, tactical overlay has you can show which armies enemy armies are flagged in red uh, your armies are flagged in yellow you could do that by clicking the um, tick here so if you want to keep track of wealth stability and allies with other factions this is very useful to study let's go back clicking on a settlement now the uh, province of Reichland is listed here and you can see which settlements are within the province of Reichland. Altdorf is the capital of my empire and if you look down here you can see all the improvements and buildings that went into uh, Altdorf. Right now the stuff that's been ticked that's what's been completed so right now it's a town to get to a city status I need more funds once I do change this into a city I'll get more income there'll be more public order the population will grow and we'll get more income from all regions and the provinces and all buildings etc etc more more um, varied troops and such I built a rally field as well to recruit soldiers your infrastructure here right now it's just a farm to uh, grow the population and whatever units have been damaged out on the field they'll replenish here faster thanks to the field spade and bricks show a construction slot empty construction slot and you can fill it with any one of these uh, improvements here you can start military recruitment but since you already have it here you won't really um, get any benefit from it it's better to add one of the other three. You can con uh, concentrate on defense, stronger walls, guard houses, garrisons. The garrison, uh, there'll be more defense. Their defense is allowed in your town. Enemy heroes will have a harder time causing trouble in settlements. Military support, you can upgrade weapons and armor for each of your soldiers and add magic units, including the witch hunters who have dedicated their lives to eradicating the forces of chaos. Infrastructure, this brings in income and public order. If you want tap rooms, get everybody drunk and happy, you will want to build this. Problem is, this improvement right here comes with quite a hefty price tag but so far public order is okay as you can tell from this tab here if you highlight this uh, ribbon here you can see how much income and wealth is going into this town along with the others public order the garrison size so there's i think there's 16 units in there so it's very well defended and the strategic location to see how important this uh, this uh, settlement is along with its um, location so the undead want my building I'll never give it to them as we gathered from that summary the undead want my town and I'll never give it to them 
that's not too important. You can just uh, keep track of events that just happened in this t um, in your turn. This tab here allows you to keep track of your forces, including heroes and faction leaders like Karl Franz here. These are the lords. Right now, most of them are governing settlements, but I think one is out on the field going to attack Marienburg. So clicking on one of these forces, let's go over to Karl Franz. This is the faction leader Karl Franz, and you can, as you can see, as we've already seen, all these uh, unit cards here represent his forces. As he fights and as he governs, he'll level up and you'll be able to give him new skills. This is his uh, weapons and armor here. If you click this icon here, you can see what he's leveled up to. You can choose each skills he specializes in. So, for example, I've got Carl to be uh, hard to hit and an inspiring presence. So now he has these benefits that he brings to his army. So on his steel, for example, that's what I trained him in, his forces will hit harder and um, take more. They'll be uh, better at attacking and better at defense. Pistol Corps, the ranged units in the army will have more ammunition, devastating charge, soldiers under Karl's command will have a charge bonus. Where, where, where am I going? Here we go. Let's look at the Heroes tab here. Where is it? Oh, excuse me. Heroes tab, Heroes tab. Where is it? Mm. Ah, here we go. Let's start with Recruit Lords first. If you hire lords on this panel here, they'll add further bonuses to your empire. You can hire them as governors and settlements and generals leading armies. We've got Wolfric Velgir here, and he brings some benefits to the empire. If we send him out on the field as a general, he'll have a melee attack of plus four and a leadership of plus six to inspire the men. We're not going to recruit him just yet, uh, because we've got plenty of lords out there so far. And we haven't conquered enough territory yet. This time we don't have any um, heroes to recruit yet. We do need some prerequisites first. If we want battle wizards we need to build the out of conclave of battle wizards. The shrine of Sigma for the warrior priests and the temple of Sigma for the witch hunters. But sometimes recruits heroes will be will willingly volunteer. So, if we go... Because we have two of them already. Here's one of them right now. Theodric Kalb. And again, you can level him up. As you send him out on missions and in the battlefield. Well, I don't think we'll be able to do anything with him now. Because he can sabotage enemy buildings as well. He can assassinate faction leaders and assault enemy units too. In the same way a spy in the old Total War games would uncover enemy garrisons or an assassin would sabotage buildings and assassinate leaders. These tab, well these buttons down here, this is probably what you'll be clicking on mostly on the campaign map. This is the technology tree. You do need to meet some prerequisites first before you can unlock everything else. So if you want to um, produce better siege equipment and missile units, you will need to build a foundry. But if you invest in this and start building the prerequisites, you will unlock all of these uh, research projects. They'll improve your soldiers They'll improve your infrastructure, and they'll keep your populace happy too. The treasury panel. Keep track of financial records including stuff like tax revenue and trade. 
I'm getting a lot of money coming in from trade, but it's expensive to keep the army, so I'm losing a lot as well. Speaking of trade, you can list your trade partners here. Karak Norm, Sterland and Tabelclad. Talabberclad are my trade partners. And Bretonia, Bretonia as well. And this tab right here goes into higher details of your treasury. What you're making in trade, what you're making uh, through taxes. You can also look at that from up here as well. Just a smaller summary of what you're making from each settlement and how much the ar keep upkeep of the army costs. And some look what else. Diplomacy. Right, those who are familiar with Total War games will know what to expect here. All the factions that you um, discovered listed here. They can even tell who's happy with you and who's not. So for example, we've got these faces here. This shows the attitude level. I think that color shows neutral. Is it neutral? Yes, it's a neutral factor. It's a yellowish gray color. Red, obviously they completely hate you. These uh, s sword icons here means you're at war with them. If you scroll down, if you've already established other relationships, there's more icons down here showing treaties, including non-aggression packs, where you vow not to attack each other. And military access, that flag and arrow icon, you're allowed to cross your armies over to over their land and their armies over yours. I think the more friendlier faction I'm with is the Karak Norn, who are a dwarven faction. And as you can tell from this faction here, from the green face, we have signed a number of treaties and we're on very good terms as well. You can see their relationships with other factions too. We're probably not gonna... Actually, you know what, let's try it. Let's see if we can initiate uh, trade relations with the Karak Hirn, another dwarven faction. Make your proposal. My long beards grumble, so make it quick. Okay, keep your beard on. Uh, can I set up a trade agreement? No. Uh, okay, there's nothing really worth doing for now. You could start a non-aggression pack, but I need to move my armies quickly, so we're just gonna skip that. It's a bit disappointing. I don't think there's any um, <laughs> uh, negotiating with greenskins. They are orcs after all, all they want to do is fight. And don't even get me started with the undead vampire counts. I haven't seen the forces of chaos just yet, but I'm sure I'll be ready for them. And again, like in Diplomacy, if you click the Known Factions tab, you'll be able to see a shorter summary of relationships between other yourselves and other factions along with other factions, relationships with factions in the game. It's easier to tell this way who's friendly with you and who's not. So for now I can see that Sterland and Talabek... I can't even pronounce that name! Talabekland. Yeah, I think that's it. Talabekland. They're both friendly with me. And we've got a good trade agreement with them too. Same with uh, Britonia and Karaknorn. Everybody else I'm okay with except the skull mashers, but they're they're pissed off at everybody, so there's no helping them. And Marienburg, they're not too happy that I took a settlement from them. But I needed Kirkland and they wouldn't become my vassal, so I had to take it the hard way, didn't I? And this screen right here, this is your office tab where you can assign lords that are leading armies or managing settlements to government positions. And they'll add certain uh, advantages to your empire. So for example, if you put a lord here in the as a treasurer, we'll have more tradable resources, there'll be more income. So let's put 
Nej, nå ja. Det vil være cheap, if I assign a Castellian engineer, det vil være cheaper income, well, sorry, not cheaper income, cheaper artillery units and cheaper construction. So maybe, since I'm having him more as a, um, these two here, I think he's on the field, so I don't think he'll be do much good in the office. So let's put Gustav here and Rupert here. I can kick them out anytime I want to, but I won't do that for now because I need them. And I've assigned lords to government positions with the Emperor Karl Franz at the top, but I can't kick him out. Well, of course, why would I want to? Because he is the Emperor. Finally, a faction summary, right? No, no, not finally, excuse me. Objectives! In a campaign, you give it objectives to uh, complete the campaign successfully in this long campaign. I have to control each and every one of these provinces. I've already controlled Reichland, I need everything else. I need certain territories as well, Eastern and Western Sylvania. I need to destroy a certain faction. Cycle between short and long campaign um, victories. Not a lot of difference between each um, each uh, campaign conditions. You just have to do a little bit more in the long campaign. Chapter objectives. Each chapter that you t take turns in will show you what you need to do. You get certain rewards from each uh, objective that you complete, be it a new unit or currency. Okay, now finally we have the faction summary. In the middle you have a lovely picture, or video rather, of your faction leader. Summarizes the treasury, the income you're receiving, settlements own, um, who's in your army? I got two battle wizards. They willingly volunteered. See your trade partners, who you're at war with, your allies. Well, they're not... Okay, Karak Norn, the dwarves, they're defensive allies. They're not military allies, so I can't ask to go to war with... I can't ask them to send their armies over to me. Only if they're attacked, or if I'm attacked, they'll send their armies to help. If you click the records tab, you can see events from past turns and finally the statistics here um, how much you've progressed each turn I've got 23 turns and I've got Reichland under my control how many settlements uh, settlements captured, settlements lost diplomatic standings income you're making and expenditure and your military forces, which units you have so on and so forth and so forth and I think that was an overview of the campaign map. Yep, that is it for the campaign map. And uh, those who have played Total War before will certainly be familiar with it. This adds one or two more changes because it combines Total War with the Warhammer universe. And it brings what was in Warhammer to Total War. But if you're a fan of the series, you will know what to expect and know what to love about Total War. So now we're going to see some combat. It's probably going to be a custom battle. It's just going to give you a brief overview of what to expect in real-time battles and how to crush your foes on the battlefield. Right then. So here we are on this battlefield here. The Empire's Finest is sprawled out in formation on the battlefield map. Today we'll be fighting the Greenskin Horde. We've got a good combination of troops here, heavy infantry. We've got some missile units, the handgunners. We have also a cavalry unit, which are exclusive to the Empire. Demigriff Knights! Demigriff Knights who excel in attacking larger prey like giants and arachnorox spiders, which we will need for this battle here because the Greenskin Horde do have spiders and a and uh, giants. We also got these are used for artillery, and we've got some heroes fighting for us too. Arena, listen. Like the Empire Captain and we are a Bright Wizard who specializes in casting fire magic. These are the 
Cool shooting. These are the uh, magic spells that you can cast during battles. Some will attack the enemy, some will improve your unit stats. So playing Total War before, those of you familiar with the battles, you'll know what to expect. All your soldiers are sprawled across the map and you can select either one of them by using the unit card or clicking on them directly. And you can start moving them around the map, hold the right mouse button, you can change their rank and, and spread depending on what kind of units you have. If missile units are sprawled out like this, they'll be more accurate, but they will be exposed to enemy fire more. The Empire and Jaws! Melee mode, um, if, the, uh, if your soldiers have a range attack before a melee attack, you click this button here and they'll just continue They're using their melee weapon and act as infantry or cavalry. You can group formation. You can group units together as well. Group. We're just going to group the whole lot because we need to put them all in formation. Now, speaking of formations, before there were many formations that you could set troops in. You could have artillery in between units. You can have a specialist infantry in the front with a supporting infantry behind. But here, you can only have melee units in the front, formation locked. or missile units in the front. This does help get into fights quicker and removes micromanaging, but it would have been good if you could have those extra formations together. It'd be more useful to make tactical decisions on the fly and have a different arrangement for your entire army. Finally, we got this button here, which toggles skirmish mode, keeps melee... F no, not melee. Missile units away from the front lines. Keeping distance, sir. Which is what we're going to do. And the best thing to do in this case, the green skin horde will come over to us. So we're just going to put them all in guard mode. This will stop the uh, the ranks from breaking line and chasing after the enemy. Shields up! So instead of me talking through this battle, let's just play this out and see how this goes, yeah? Beware the Franco! 
general! And by the eternal grace of Lord Sigma, our enemy is vanquished. So I think that was the best example of doing a battle. Rather than me speaking through it, I'll let you show what you, um, you what to expect when you play this game. And that has been a demonstration of Total War Warhammer. This has been Asad Quadri from the Coalition.com. Until next time, I'll be seeing you.